who is my neighbor? If I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself, who is my neighbor? Our second scripture reading comes from Luke 10, 25 through 37. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? He asked, the one who showed him mercy, Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Will Thompson, and I am a student here at Bluff Park. I'm here to tell you about my experience on the Youth Summer Mission Trip, Appalachia Service Project, also called ASP. For those of you that don't know, Appalachia Service Project is a home repair project centered in the base of the Appalachian Mountains. Students who go on this trip need to be ready to do anything from painting to building ramps and decks. Anyone grades 9 through 12 can go on ASP. All you need is a servant's heart and a couple pairs of work pants. This year, 19 of our youth served at ASP, including adult volunteers. I am in the ninth grade, so this was the first year I was able to go on ASP. I decided to sign up, not really knowing what I was getting into. As I learned more about ASP, my excitement started to build. I waited in anticipation for our departure. After what seemed like eternity, the day, Sunday, June 1st, finally arrived. I got up, grabbed my bag, and headed to the church. Everyone tossed their luggage in a U-Haul cargo trailer, squeezed into three SUVs, and got comfortable for the six-hour drive. After four hours on the highway, a stop for lunch at Cookout, and two hours of driving through the mountains of Northeast Tennessee, we were all happy to know when we had arrived at our destination. Upon arrival at the elementary school where we'd be staying for the next seven days, I was pleasantly surprised to find out it had air conditioning. I had heard stories from some veteran ASP volunteers about past places they had stayed in where a perfect mixture of humidity and heat kept everything in a constant stage of dampness. So my expectations for housing were definitely exceeded. The first night, we went to orientation, ate dinner, and got ready for our first day on the job. The next morning, leaders woke us up with a massive boombox blaring the song Down Under by the band Men at Work at full volume. This was our alarm clock for the next seven days, and it's safe to say I won't be listening to that song again. <laughs> After waking up and getting ready each day, we headed down to the school's cafeteria and ate breakfast. We then collected our supplies for the day and headed to the multiple work sites Bluff Park was assigned to. I'll let the next speaker, Molly Edwards, go into detail about the projects that we worked on. But let me tell you this. Tennessee may be north of Alabama, but its summer heat is not a force to be reckoned with. On a regular work day, we arrived back at the elementary school around 5, showered in a trailer, ate dinner, and had a time of worship before heading to bed and doing it all again the next day. At the end of the week, I felt fulfilled and wished I could stay for even a day longer. It is said that giving is better than receiving, and I experienced that firsthand. ASP had such an astounding impact on my life, I cannot even begin to put it into words. I'll definitely be returning to next summer. 
a passage of scripture that really sums up my experience at ASP is Proverbs 22, 22 through 23. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in your power, act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it in you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Molly Edwards. I'm a senior at Hoover High School, and this was my second summer going to ASP. My group leaders both years were Donna Norris and Mark Hearn, and they were wonderful leaders, and I am extremely grateful for all that they have taught me. So my first summer at ASP, our project was relatively easy. We built a deck and a few stairs so that our homeowners could exit and enter their house with ease. However, this trip, we ran into a lot more complications. <laughs> um, our project was a multi-week project for sure. We had to decrease the slope of a ramp, extend the length of it, and build a landing. So we went in and the first day or so, it was pretty easy. We were just tearing out the old ramp and digging holes for new posts. However, when we came back the next day, all of the, all of the holes that we had dug for the posts were filled up with groundwater, which slowed our project down a lot. So, and then one of the other complications we ran into was the width of the deck. We were really worried when we saw the measurements that the width of the deck was going to, I mean the width of the ramp was going to be too narrow for our homeowner's wheelchair to get down. So we called the ASP people and we wasted, unfortunately we wasted almost a whole day trying to get the measurements and communication and communicate with them about what we were supposed to do. Luckily, we were able to extend the width of the ramp, and we finished our project the rest of the week with ease and with a lot of hard work. So, that's all. Man, thank y'all. That was incredible. So, if y'all need any help building a ramp or a deck, we have two people up here that definitely know how to do it, and some others that are in the crowd today. So, Youth Sunday is such a great time. I'm a big fan of Youth Sunday to see uh, youth students up here, to be able to participate, be able to read, be able to uh, pray, be able to lead all these different parts of our service. It's such a blessing. And if you're a visitor here with us today, I just want to let you know how blessed you have been. The students here at this church are incredible, and they're lovely people, and I'm super thankful that I get to be here, and I get to be the student director here. Uh, it's such a blessing. So what I really want to talk about now for the rest of our time here together during Youth Sunday is what we kind of talked about was these, this mission trip that a bunch of the youth were able to go on. We were able to go up on ASP and we were able to serve our neighbors. We were able to serve our neighbors even though they were in Tennessee, they were our neighbors. And we were able to make all these really cool connections with all of the homeowners, with all these people that we worked with. We were able to make connections, we were able to eat lunch, we were able to pray, we were able to do all of these really cool things. And oftentimes, I know there's a lot of people in here who have done mission work, and oftentimes I think uh, when we go and we do missions, when we go and we say we're going to go help these people, we expect to make a lot of change in the area or in the people's lives that we're going to, but often what happens is the real change happens in ourselves. Right? We go and we expect great things to happen, and they do happen, but it often happens in our own lives. We end up making connections, we end up building relationships, and the change happens in our own spirit, in our own soul. So we heard some about the youth and their experiences, but what I hope that this does is, I hope that this inspires you. Not just to say, oh, well, the youth got to go do that, or, uh, well, that's just for certain people, but I hope this inspires you to think about your neighbor, to think about the change you can make in your neighbor's lives around you. Our scripture reading this morning was from Luke 10, and it's chapter, tw and it's chapter 10, and it's verses 25 through 37. I'm going to read a piece of it again really quick. It says, on one occasion, an expert in the law set up to test Jesus. T teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? 
You see, Jesus is asked two questions this morning, two very important questions. Number one is, how do I inherit eternal life? And we kind of get an answer to that. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But then he's asked this follow-up question. Well, then who is my neighbor? If I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself, who is my neighbor? And Jesus responds with probably the most popular parable that he tells. In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robber? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him to go and to do likewise. I think if I had a moment with each and every single one of you this morning, and we just talked about this one question, who is my neighbor? I think everyone in here would have a really good answer. I have a lot of confidence in y'all. I think if I sat down with every single one of you and asked, who is your neighbor? You would all have a really good answer. And I think a lot of us would come to the same kind of conclusion, right? We would say, everyone. That's what the scripture is kind of talking about. Everyone is my neighbor. But I do fear that we miss out on the very last part of this scripture. The very last thing Jesus says in the scripture that we read this morning. It's that we are called to go and to do likewise. We are called to go and to be like the one that showed mercy. We are called to go and be the one that did the nice thing that they did not have to do. We are called to go above and beyond to show radical hospitality. I think we all like the idea of being that person. We all like the idea of being that person, being the person that reaches out and is able to show love to somebody who's in need. But I think the struggle that is shown in the scripture this morning is that this is the one person this Samaritan did not want to show this kindness to. The Jews and the Samaritans were struggling together. They didn't like each other. They had a lot of beef. There's a lot of arguments, and there's a lot of cultural history that went into all of this. And so, in this story that we're telling this morning, Jesus is saying the Samaritan saw the Jewish man, this man that he isn't supposed to like, this man that has probably been rude to him before, this man who has done, whose people have done all these bad things to him. And the Samaritan doesn't think about any of that, but instead the Samaritan goes, and he helps. The Samaritan is the one who reaches out and serves him the right way. The Samaritan is the one that goes above and beyond. And I think sometimes we need to ponder this thought. We need to think about what it would mean to be the good Samaritan. What would it mean to show love to people that we think don't deserve it? What would it mean to show radical hospitality, radical kindness? To everyone in our lives and not to think about what they have done to us in the past. To not ponder whether or not they deserve it, but just to give it freely. So how do we this morning take this scripture? We know who the Good Samaritan is. We know what the Good Samaritan does, but how do we go and do likewise? How are we caring for our neighbors? I think sometimes it can be easier to care for people that we don't necessarily know than to care for people that we do know. But how can we care for our neighbors that are right here in Birmingham? How can we care for our neighbors that are right here in Bluff Park? I would invite us all, I would challenge us all this week to go and to listen to the people around us, to find a neighbor to listen to those that are struggling, to find those who are just barely making a buy each and every single day, 
the people that are around us all the time that maybe we don't know super well, the people that we see on a daily basis that maybe we could have a greater impact in their life just by getting to know them or just by reaching out. Maybe we should reach out to the people in our lives that maybe they feel like they are half dead in the ditch. Let's try to find those people this week and reach out and to be the Good Samaritan. If we can become known as a congregation, as a church, as a community that can truly love people and not look at them and say, well, I don't know if you're deserving, but just love them and give them radical kindness, radical hospitality, then I think we could become known as these people, the people who are the Good Samaritans, the people that show the same love the same grace, the same forgiveness that we have been shown. I'd invite us all to think about that this week and to truly find the people in our lives that we could love better and that we could bring healing and forgiveness into their lives. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, cause us to become good Samaritans in our neighborhoods on our streets, in our community. Lord, may we be known as people who show forgiveness and withhold judgment. May we be people who are so quick to love and so slow to anger. Lord, may we show people the same kindness, the same forgiveness, the same grace that we have been shown through you and through the wonderful people that are in our lives as well. Lord, just cause us to show radical hospitality, radical kindness, radical love to all the people in our lives. Lord, we pray all this in your name. Amen.